How's everybody doing this morning? How's everybody doing this morning again? Come on, with weather like this, we should be rejoicing. Amen? Praise the Lord. Somebody is visiting here from New York with us. So I just gave them the good news. We sent all the snow down there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, uh, would you turn with me to Revelation 3 and 20? Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Lord, I just thank you for your word. Just minister unto your people this morning, I pray. Let their hearts be open, their minds be receptive, O oh God. Just plow the fallow ground, O oh God, that your word will germinate, it will bear fruit, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen, amen. The time that we have this morning, I just want to share from the thought, Jesus makes house calls. Jesus makes house calls. You know, in the time that we are living today, I know it's easy for us to lose hope. In this season, when we look around, when we look at the news uh, and everything that is happening in the world today, uh, it can be very discouraging uh, and our hearts can grow faint. There are wars and rumors of wars and there are famines, there are pestilences, there are earthquakes. There's a a lot of instability uh, in the financial market that we see uh, that is happening all around the world today. But Jesus, he spoke of these things uh, in Matthew 24. He said uh, that there will be wars and rumors of wars. He said that there will be earthquakes and pestilences uh, and nation against nation uh, and kingdom uh, against kingdom. But then he finishes the statement and he says, uh, Do not be alarmed, for the end is not yet. And Jesus said that we, the church, we should be aware of the things that are happening in the world today, uh, but we should not be afraid. We should be aware, but we should not be afraid uh, because... Uh, your anchor is not in this world, but your anchor is in the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I believe that Jesus says in times like these, the church needs to rise up as never before. Because we are the extension of God's hands, uh, the extension of God's feet, uh, and to be a true representation uh, of the true character of God uh, in Jesus Christ. Uh, our passion, our commitment, uh, it needs to be uh, on full display uh, in this time uh, that we are living in. You see, I am not interested anymore of being uh, an apologetic Christian. See, I will no longer apologize uh, for being a man after God's own heart. You know, I, I know it's not a popular thing uh, in the times that we are living in, uh, but I'm not here to be popular. See, I'm here to serve God. I'm here to honor God. I'm here to be a son. Uh, I'm here to be a father. I'm here to be a husband. I'm here to be a brother. I'm here to stand in the gap for those who cannot stand for themselves. See, and I believe that it is time 
that men and women of God, uh, they take their rightful position uh, in the body of Christ. Uh, men ought to take their position, their rightful position, uh, and stand in authority uh, in our community, uh, in our homes, uh, in our uh, places of work. It is time for men uh, to step up to the plate. Uh, it's time for men uh, to take the reins uh, of responsibility uh, and be just as loud uh, about our God uh, as the world uh, is about their sin. See, I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. And Paul rightly put it, uh, for I am not ashamed uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, because it is the power of God uh, unto salvation. Uh, there is no other name uh, given under heaven uh, whereby men uh, can be saved. Uh, and I want you to know today uh, that we are walking uh, in the power of God. Uh, we are walking uh, in the strength of God. Uh, and God wants us uh, in this season uh, to walk uh, in his boldness uh, and in his authority. Because God is counting uh, on you and I in this season as never before. See, this is the season where who you are will come to the forefront. Because we need to be real believers. We need to be people who have a hope. People who have strength, people who have the grace of God and who know how to pray, who know how to cover people, not judge people, not condemn people, not beat them up into a Christless eternity, but give them the same hope that where the blood found you. Do not ever forget where the blood found you. See, Jesus is looking for some passionate folks. And you can't be quiet about what you're passionate about. See, many of us, we have a, a favorite sports team. And when your team loses, it affects you. Not just affects you, it affects your whole day. You go to work Monday morning and nobody can talk to you because don't talk to me, just leave me alone. My team just lost again. You don't even play for the team. You never even got tickets to see one of their games, but you say, it's my team. It is because you're passionate about that team. You feel it when they lose. But the truth of the matter is this. Or in reality, I'm not going to be more passionate about a team that does not know me than for the God who saved me. See, Jesus, he was speaking prophetically to this church in Romans, in Revelation chapter 3. He was speaking to the church at Laodicea. And it's a town in the city of Phrygia in Asia Minor. And he spoke to multiple churches prophetically concerning certain things. But this church... He spoke from the context of rather you being hot or cold. But because you are lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out or I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. And Jesus is saying, I'm looking for some people who are hot or cold, not in between. But if we would look at the context in which Jesus was speaking to this church, uh, to this particular bunch of people, because if we don't take the scripture into context, sometimes uh, reading the Bible can become very confusing. 
But if we take it in context, uh, we can understand uh, what the Scripture is saying to us. Um, this Scripture is actually talking to the people at Laodicea in the context of being hot and cold. Uh, it's not about sin. It is because of their passion. If you read the previous verses from the one that I took out, you would see this. He was speaking to them because uh, they had a passion for wealth and they had become, uh, <clears throat> in, their, in, their, in, their, in their passion for wealth, uh, they could not have moved forward. Uh, their pa they lost their passion uh, to serve people uh, because uh, what they had, uh, they thought that they're not supposed uh, to share with anybody else uh, or people were not good enough uh, to socialize with uh, or to share with. Uh, they, have become, uh, they, they have become so unstable uh, in what they have received. Let me paint a little picture here for you so it bring you to a more modern era. The church at Laodicea is like our modern day New York City of our day. It was the capital. It was well known for its textiles, uh, its medical schools, uh, its banking system. Uh, it was a place to be. Uh, it's a place everybody wanted to go to. Uh, they had everything going for them. Everybody was wealthy. They had their retirement packages all planned out. They had the RRSPs and the RSPs all packaged and set in order. They had stocks and bonds and options and whatever it is, they had it. They all belonged to the homeowners society. Where everybody, all the women, uh, they would walk their children together. While the husbands, uh, they go to, go to work, uh, their grass was all cut. Uh. Have you ever seen a place like that? You see, they were become so, they had become so comfortable uh, in the good life uh, that Jesus was saying, uh, you are so comfortable uh, that you have forgotten uh, the spirit uh, that is in your life uh, that I have given to you. Uh, you see, because sometimes uh, chase the, chasing after the illusion of success uh, will cause us uh, to miss the decay uh, that creeps into our spirits. See, because success has never been measured uh, by what you have, uh, but success uh, is by, by what is in your heart, uh, what is rooted uh, in your spirit, uh, and what you can give away uh, from yourself. Jesus said, I want you to be hot or cold. And the significance of this is that Laodicea, they got their water or their water source was away from the city. It came from two different sources. One source, it was about five miles away from the hot springs. And they constructed an aqueduct that will bring the water into the city. And it was a place called, called Hierapolis. And they got their cold water from another source. Uh, from that place, it was called uh, Colossae. So Jesus, uh, he says, listen, you got hot, you got cold. Uh, but when you mix them, uh, it's good for nothing. And most of the time when we think about this, uh, we are thinking about sin. But it is not sin that Jesus was talking about. He was saying, hey guys. You got so much money, so much success, so much blessing that you have forgotten how to use the, the heat of your passion for me. You have forgotten how to heal the wounds of those who are broken. You have forgotten the cool refreshment of the Holy Spirit who can heal the wounds and mend the brokenhearted. And he's saying... I would rather have you hot or cold, but because uh, you have been caught up in the lukewarmness uh, of your life, uh, you have missed uh, me. So Jesus comes along and says, uh, I'm knocking. He's knocking. 
And Jesus comes to the, the door of the heart of these people. And he asks the question. Am I still your first love? Do you love me like you used to? Or have you been so blessed that you forgot what it was like when the blood found you? See, Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart today and he's saying, do you remember me? He says, I, I want some time back with you, just you and I says, I'm knocking at the door of your heart. And he says, if you let me in, I'm going to dine with you and you with me. I want some intimate fellowship, not surface relationship. See, no more I'll get to you when I get to you. No more I'll, I'll see you on the weekend. I know we all have called him Lord. But if he is preeminent in our lives, how come he's not a priority? If he is preeminent in your life, then we need to make him a priority. And it is time that we stop penciling Jesus into our busy schedule. And it's time that we fit our schedule around our Jesus. See, Jesus is looking for some people who will make him the priority in their lives. Someone who will give him uh, the first fruits of your passion. Because when you honor God, and when you honor God first, uh, and make Jesus the first priority in your life, uh, it is a, a household fruit. Uh, it is generational Joshua 24 and 15, it says, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And no matter what happened in the life of Joshua, he maintained his stance that he, his family, his children, his children's children, they were going to serve the Lord. See, God redeemed him from situation after situation because he maintained his faith. Jesus remained preeminent in his life, the priority of his life. And it's time for you and I, saints of God, to don't make Jesus optional any longer, but make him a priority. See, saints of God, we need to keep Jesus on our lips. We need to keep Jesus uh, in our family. We need to keep Jesus uh, everywhere we go and make him uh, a priority. Uh, we need to keep Jesus uh, and on our lips uh, for our marriages. Uh, Jesus on our lips uh, for our businesses. Uh, Jesus on our lips uh, in our schools, uh, in our universities. Uh, we need to make Jesus uh, a priority uh, everywhere we go. See, I believe it's time as believers to bring Jesus back to the forefront of our lives. Because he says, I'm knocking. See, we schedule many things in our lives that we think is important. We schedule hair appointments. And all the ladies said, I've recently learned this one. You schedule nail appointments. And all the ladies said, and the men said, how much money would that cost? You see, we schedule so many things that we think are important. We make appointments for so many different things. But when was the last time you scheduled an appointment with your king? We, we schedule medical appointments. We schedule dental appointments. But when was the last time you, you scheduled some alone time with Jesus. 
He's saying, I'm knocking. He says, I want to spend some time with you. Our lives has become so busy. We can't receive what's in his heart and what's in his hands for you. Because we're too busy. Jesus says, knock, knock. And you may answer, who is it? He responds, it's Jesus. And you probably say, not now, Jesus. It's Wednesday night. I'm busy. I'm watching Scandal. Jesus responds. He says, I know. But if you let me in, I will deliver you from the scandal you're in. Knock, knock. Who is it? It's Jesus. Oh, I, I, I'm watching Wheel of Fortune. You know that's my show, Jesus. But he says, uh, if you let me in, I will give you more than a fortune in the flesh. He says, uh, I've got gold and silver that you don't know about. The Bible says, uh, it is gold uh, refined by fire. I've got wisdom in my heart uh, that will free you uh, from generational curses, uh, from bondage. Uh, he says, uh, if you will just uh, allow me to come in. It's when we allow Jesus to come in. We would not be celebrating uh, other people's success. Uh, you'll be celebrating uh, your own success. Um, you will spend some time. He says, uh, if you come and spend some time with me, uh, I will give you uh, a God idea that will open up uh, the windows of heaven. Uh, the heavenly economy uh, will be at your disposal. And he is knocking. See, the reason why we don't open the door when Jesus knocks is like most of us. We don't like company when our house is dirty. And, and here's the thing I love about Jesus. He doesn't care if your house is dirty. In fact, he knew how dirty your house was. That's why he came knocking. So you, you really need to give God praise there because uh, he visits the houses uh, that needs the most repair. See, Jesus is not like the religious folks. They only stop by when everything is perfect. See, Jesus, he specializes uh, in surprise visits, unexpected arrivals. But he also brings with him uh, Unexpected miracles. See, growing up as a, as a child, growing up in my parents' house, maybe you, you might remember this, or maybe you're too young, you're not old as I am. You know when your parents bought a new couch? Oh, you guys never know about that. Okay, good. When they bring the couch in the house, they take plastic and they cover it. And they warn you, do not sit on the couch. Don't go eat on the couch. Don't drink on the couch. They put this plastic and you, where I come from is very hot. When you sit on the couch, you feel like you're melting into the couch because you're sweating. Well, some of you can identify with that. But Jesus is saying, Allow me to come in. He says, take the plastic off. He says, take your mask off. He says, show me what you're really going through. Show me what you're really dealing with. See, many people or many of us today, we are afraid to let Jesus in because we have been taught or we think in our minds that Jesus came to judge and to condemn and to burn with fire. And I don't know where you have been and what you have been taught. But Luke chapter 9, somewhere around 55 and 56, it, 
It talks about the disciples wanted to go through Samaria and they didn't permit them to do it. Uh, and James and John, they turned to Jesus and he's, they, they told him, shall we rain down fire and brimstone on them? Jesus turned around and he said, you don't even know the spirit you're of. The son of man came to save lives, uh, not to take lives. Then again, he says in Luke 19 and 10, uh, for the Son of Man uh, is come to seek uh, and to save uh, those that are lost. Uh, he didn't come to condemn. Uh, he didn't come to pull down. Uh, he came to love. See, let me tell you a little bit about your Jesus. See, while you were busy running after other things, Jesus was pursuing you. And he has not been running after you with anger, not with condemnation. But he has been running after you uh, with a love that is so pure, uh, a love that is so, tr so true, uh, a love that is so faithful uh, that you could not even imagine it uh, until you let it in. See, I'm talking about a love uh, that will change your life. Uh, I'm talking about a love uh, that will heal your heart. Uh, I'm talking about a love uh, that will wipe those tears away. Uh, I'm talking about a love uh, that will give you a new perspective. Uh, I'm talking about a love uh, that will wake you up tomorrow. Uh, and you will say, uh, greater is he uh, who is in me uh, than he who is in the world. I'm telling you, Jesus has pursued you, and he will continue to pursue you, and he will keep knocking until you open the door. Would you let him in today? Do not be intimidated by anything you have gone through. Jesus still loves you. Jesus is knocking. Knock, knock. Who is it? Jesus. I can't let you in, Jesus, because I failed. Jesus said, I know you failed, but I'm coming with your victory. Knock, knock. Who is it? Jesus, I can't let you in. I've made too many mistakes. Uh, the Bible says, uh, there is therefore now uh, no condemnation uh, to them that are in Christ. Uh, let me in. Uh, I'm coming with healing. Uh, I'm coming with a newness of mind. Uh, I'm coming in with power. I'm coming in uh, with a breakthrough. Uh, somebody uh, is at the door. Uh, would you answer it? Uh, because uh, you can't uh, go long enough uh, or far enough uh, for, to make Jesus uh, stop knocking uh, at the door of your heart. Let me tell you this. You don't have to perform for Jesus to show up. Jesus said it doesn't matter what you've done. His word says come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden, uh, and I will give you rest. Uh, take my yoke upon you uh, and learn of me, uh, for I am meek and lowly of heart, uh, and my yoke is easy, uh, and my burden is light. Uh, he loves you uh, right where you are. See, there is no judgment here. The blood of Jesus uh, has been shed for everything uh, that you've been hiding uh, in the house of your heart. Uh, you know that Jesus, uh, he has been running after you uh, and he, you cannot escape uh, his love. That's an eternal love. That's an everlasting love. He put himself high up on a cross. If you remember when he was nailed to the cross up on Calvary on the hill of Golgotha. It was the highest place in the city. And they nailed him on that cross. And he stayed on the cross. And he says, here am I. Can you see me? He says, I'm here. That's an everlasting love. Do you think it was the nails that held him to the cross? It was his love that kept him on the cross. 
You see, he could have come down that cross uh, at any moment, uh, but he stayed there because he loves you uh, that much uh, that he stayed on the cross. Uh, and if he did not uh, stay on the cross, uh, when he came knocking uh, at your door, uh, you, he would have nothing uh, to offer you. You didn't get that. If Jesus uh, did not stay on that cross uh, when he came knocking uh, at the door of your heart, uh, what would he have given to you? He had to stay on the cross uh, because it was his love uh, that kept him there. Somebody is at the door. And he says, even though you have appointments to go to, Jesus comes to you. When was the last time your doctor came over? Oh, I was just in the neighborhood and I just dropped in. Oh, can I give you a physical? Get away from me. That's, that's weird. That's not normal. Or do it, does your nail tech come over? I was just in the neighborhood. Can I do your nails? I want you to know that Jesus makes house calls. He makes house calls and he comes to heal you at the point of your need. He says, I don't care if you're hot or cold or if you have lost your way in the middle of a lukewarm life. I've come to restore the heat to your passion. I've come, I've come to restore a cool refreshing uh, of the Holy Spirit to your soul. And he was knocking at the door of the church at Laodicea. And like we have established, it's not about sin. This is about the heart, your heart towards other people uh, that don't know me yet. See, I, I believe that they have been given and we have been given... All the resources, the gifts, uh, all kinds of opportunity. And Jesus says, uh, I want you to use it uh, to win souls for Christ. When was the last time we invited someone out to church? Or when was the last time we offered to drive somebody to church? Or when you brought them to church, you offered to take them out to lunch? Jesus says, uh, I want you to go the extra mile. He says, I want you to fight for souls uh, like I fought for you. He says, I gave my life. I gave my all. He says, I want you to pursue them. He says, I want you to knock on the door of their hearts until you have an opportunity. You know that somebody, when you go to work on, on Monday or during the week, uh, sitting at their desk looking all depressed and, and despondent, uh, go over uh, and offer a word of prayer. Brother or sister, I'm praying for you. Uh, if there is anything I can do, uh, make yourself available. Uh, here is a little gift card. Uh, it's not much, uh, but what I have, uh, I'm willing to give to you. Uh, and whatever I can do, uh, I will continue uh, praying for you. <clears throat> See, that one seed that you sow will be a difference between heaven or hell, a Christless eternity, or a life spent with Jesus. The little seeds that you sow, uh, sometimes you think uh, it is not anything, uh, but God sees it, uh, and he works on those things uh, in the hearts of people. I want you to ask the Lord to show you the doors that you need to knock on. Because somebody in your circle needs to hear the word of God. Somebody in your sphere of influence needs to hear the word of God. Jesus does house calls. The paralyzed man. They had to tear the roof off to put him in front of Jesus. Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house uh, to heal his daughter. Another house call. 
We, went, we just walked past everybody, went up into the bed chamber. He took Peter, James, and John with him. You know what that tells me? Jesus is willing to go to your most broken place. He's willing to go. He don't mind coming to your most broken place. Jesus, he makes house calls and he also makes grave calls. See, I don't care if that thing is dead. When Jesus is on the scene uh, and he speaks the word, uh, that thing is going to get up. Uh, and that's the power of his love for you. Uh, there is nothing uh, that is greater than the power of Jesus Christ. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. What are you going to do? A lot of times you don't let him in because you're not prepared. But Jesus said, that's cool. I don't care what it looks like. And you might respond, my house is in a mess. The foundation is broken. There are spiritual termites. The frame is broken. But in Mark 6, Jesus says, I am the carpenter. And you see, the carpenter, he knows how to start at the foundation. He knows how to start at a place uh, to get rid uh, of the spiritual splinters. Uh, he begins to reframe uh, the foundation uh, and he can give you uh, a new life uh, from the ground up. See, Jesus comes knocking at the door of your heart. And he's asking for nothing but for permission to come in. And the good thing about Jesus, he doesn't want perfection. He wants honesty. He wants honesty. He says, if you let me in, uh, I will come and dine with you and, and you with me. See, there is a beauty and an intimacy uh, of sharing a meal with Jesus. Can you imagine Jesus, uh, a red solo and a chicken roti? Oh no, maybe we should... Some veggie and some dip. I don't think so. That doesn't sound good with Jesus. Some barbecue ribs, yeah. Oh no, Jesus, you're the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. How about some lamb chops? Focus, focus. Can you imagine sharing a meal with Jesus? For the sake of time, I just have to just press on here. In Exodus 24, 9 and 12, uh, there's a passage, passage of scripture there where, where Moses was asked to come up to the mountain uh, with Aaron the priest and some of the elders. Uh, and they came on the mountain uh, and they came up to eat and to drink. And it said as they looked to heaven, uh, they saw like a glass sapphire and they saw the feet of Jesus. Uh, what I'm saying is that even back then uh, in the Old Testament, uh, Jesus wanted intimacy. Uh, he wanted fellowship. Uh, he he wanted his people to come closer and dine with him. And he still wants the same today. He wants us to come and spend time with him. See, there is nothing more intimate than sharing a meal with Jesus. That's why, that's why he is knocking. So he says, I want to come in and, and share a meal with you. And let's talk about your issues. I want to know what you're going through. That's why he wants to dine with you. In closing, there are three things that I, I want to share. The next time you hear Jesus knocking, that you should do. First of all, answer the door. You know when you look through the little curtain and you see watchtower on the top of the pamphlet, you just lock the door tight. You'll get that one in a minute. Answer the door. When Jesus knocks, don't run and hide. Jesus, I'm not home. This is a recording. You do know Jesus can walk through walls, right? Like, oops. Oh, that's you, Jesus. Oh, sorry, I was just playing. See, Jesus, when he comes knocking, open the, answer the door. Don't hide because he comes bearing gifts. He comes with your healing. 
He comes with your deliverance. He comes uh, with the answers to your prayers. Uh, he comes with a fresh perspective. Uh, he comes uh, with a new joy. Uh, he comes uh, with a rekindled passion uh, for your life. Uh, he comes with new strength. Uh, he says, uh, you can trust me. Uh, that child uh, that has been away uh, and not making wise decisions, uh, God says, uh, he's about to come home. Uh, open the, answer the door uh, because he comes uh, bearing gifts uh, let him in because he's, he's knocking and he wants to bless you. Secondly, don't just answer the door and leave him standing on the porch. Let him in. Let him see what's going on. Bring him into the inner chamber of your heart. You might say, Jesus, I don't have much. It's pretty messed up in here. But Jesus says, that's good. This is the kind of house I was looking for. He says, I've been looking to move in somewhere. Because foxes have holes. And birds have nests. But the son of man has no way to, nowhere to lay his head. But you might respond, Jesus, you're fit for a mansion. No, no, no. I was born in a stable. See, I'm cool with small places. See, I don't mind the dark places because I am the light of the world. He says, I can come in and illuminate this thing. I can make windows where there are no windows. He says, I can make doors where there are no doors because I am the door. He says, I can, I can make ways where there are no ways because I am the way, the truth, and the life. See, he's saying, I can remove all of the roaches of demonic influence. I can pour out some Holy Ghost air freshener in your heart and if you would just let me come in. He wants to come into your intimate places. He might be saying, Lord, I'm ashamed of my house. It isn't the way it's supposed to be. Jesus wants to come into your innermost place. So take him into your bedchamber. Show him where you sleep. And when Jesus, he comes in and he sees where you sleep, he says, no, 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 no. Because... There is some guilt lying over there. there. There is some shame over there. Under your bed, there is some past sins uh, that you can't shake off. Jesus says, uh, let me come in uh, and clean this whole thing out uh, so I uh, can make uh, a new place uh, of rest for your soul. He, he says, uh, show me the pillow with the tears that, that falls on that pillow when nobody sees. He says, I can, I can give you fresh linen. Jesus, when he was in the tomb, when Jesus arose, his linen, when he got up from the grave, it was folded and put back in place. So Jesus, he has fresh linen that he can put on your bed so you can rest in peace. God wants to bless you. He wants to give you a place of rest in him. Thirdly, tell the truth. Tell him the truth. You know, we want to make a big impression sometimes. Uh, Jesus comes and he answers the door and he says, how are you doing? And oh, you brought your uh, deep tone voice. You're going to reply, uh, I'm blessed and highly favored. Uh, I'm the head and not the tail. Uh, I'm above and not beneath. Uh, I'm the lender and not the borrower. I'm blessed going in. Uh, I'm blessed coming out. Uh, you see, uh, be real. When Jesus come knocking, uh, oh God, uh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, just be real. Uh, tell him what is going on uh, because he knows uh, the real you. Uh, he don't want uh, an imitation. Uh, he don't want a front. Uh, he wants to know the real you. 
Tell him the truth. There is nothing that you can say that will surprise him. You're afraid to tell him the truth because you think he might condemn you. Jesus doesn't come to condemn. You see, the religious folk, they may respond. You did what? Holy moly. Angels, let's leave this place. They walk out on you. But Jesus will respond and say, you did what? Wow. You did all of that and you still let me in? That means you can trust me in your most broken place. He says, I'm not going to break you, but I'm going to build you. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. He says, I'm going to give you a hope and a future. Would you let him, in, let him in this morning? Would you let Jesus in? Because I know he's knocking at the door of your heart. He's making a house call this morning at. Hallelujah. Would you close your eyes and bow your heads and, and just stand with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as the praise team sing this song, hallelujah. I'm not going to prolong the service. The time is gone. If you feel that tug in your heart, if you feel Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart right now, with every eye closed and every head bowed, let's have a private moment with God right now in your heart. Hallelujah. If Jesus is at the door of your heart and you want to make that decision this morning, he's knocking. Would you just lift your hand and say, could you remember me in prayer? Lift them high. Lift them high. Don't be ashamed this morning. Hallelujah. I see those hands. I see those hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see those hands. Those of us that lifted your hands. If you, have not, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, would you just say this prayer with me? Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus, uh, He died on the cross and that He rose again. The Bible says you will be saved. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died and you rose again. And I want to serve you for the rest of my days. If you have said that prayer, you are born again. You have been washed in the blood of Jesus. Right now, I just want to dismiss the service. But those of you that lifted your hands, if you want to come to the altar, we're going to pray with you. We're going to believe God for what you're believing for, that God is going to give you a breakthrough in your lives. And do not leave here. If you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please see one of our ushers or myself or Pastor John before you leave. We have some literature that we want to pass on to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray a blessing over your people right now. I pray, God, as they leave this place, they will be the head and not the tail. They will be above and not beneath. They, oh God, will be the lender and not the borrower, oh God. I pray that your peace, oh God, will continue to abound in their hearts and in their minds. Oh God, let your face continue to shine upon them. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Uh, if you want pray, if you lifted your hands, uh, please come and let us pray with you. Uh, those of us who want to leave, uh, please do so very uh, discreetly. Hallelujah.